30 in the afternoon, and we've got another ride vlog on the, on the horizon. Well, actually, yeah, this is the immediate horizon because that's where we're going now. We're doing a ride vlog. Uh, I took Friday off. Uh, not meant to slip sleeping most of the day, so there wasn't really much to vlog. Uh, you can't vlog while you're while you're in your dreams. Dreams are interesting to a certain point, but they're also, in some ways, repetitive. More often than not, themes repeat themselves in a number of different ways. In other words, well, the scene isn't exactly the same. The theme, the sort of the end content of the dream, or let's say the episode, is the same. And it just, in many ways, it's a representation or presentation of things you thought you already conquered but presented in a different way that makes it, well, in many ways, just frustrating. Because you thought you had conquered something. You thought you had dealt with it. And yet it's presented in another way, another manner. And the thing you thought you conquered, that you've dealt with, you really haven't conquered or dealt with at all. And so in many ways, you're back to square one, dealing with the thing you thought you already dealt with. And that sort of was a, was a theme over the weekend. I always feel like this when I take the, when I take not really the week off. Well, I consider my weekend, my weekend's kind of over. But I feel like this every, every, every time I take the, 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 the time off, I feel worse than when I went into it. Time off just kind of reminds you of the various different things you haven't finished that are yet to be accomplished. It's kind of like when you're very high up, you're doing the, the, the cliff climbing or whatever. They tell you not to look down. Well, taking a vacation is like looking down and seeing how high you are up. Well, and then you look up again to see how high, how far you have left to go, and you get a little weak knee, to say the least. Anyways. Lionel LeBond is back. He's aiming in a new direction now. He's to become a right-leaning independent. So we'll see how that ends up going. I think they don't necessarily call it right-leaning, right but he is sort of in that tendency there. But again, the left, and he doesn't—he doesn't agree with calling the left the left. 
He just uses it as a sort of an umbrella term. And he's somewhat right, but the thing is, at the same time, it's whole like this whole matrix thing. If you believe you're in a situation, then it's your perspective. So the people who are, say they're on the left believe in the left. That they're left liberals or, or, or liberals or whatever. But he likes to be more specific. That's why he won't use the term psychopath. Everyone's using the term psychopath rather wrong. Well, not necessarily. It's wrong from his perspective. And because law picks such minutia in terms of the syntax. It doesn't matter what idea you have. He doesn't look at the idea. He looks at the actual wording to see if you've got the wording correct without, well, well ignoring the overall context of what you're trying to say. So someone like that, well, who is a, a, again an intellectual, will in many cases miss what you're saying because he doesn't have that view. The sort of the the contextual view. He's looking at the he's looking at the syntax. The focus is on the syntax, and that can be very misleading. Just because you think you have something correct in terms of the syntax doesn't necessarily mean you need you understand the entire context of what's being talked about or the situation itself. And this goes back to the dream, where you think you you have the entire context of the dream, but the reality is you don't. And so this is this is this is, this is the feeling of being high up, feeling like you're high up. Taking a break, looking down to see where you are, to reflect on where you've been, and realizing how high up you are, and how far there is to go, and that there is, that, that you'll never end up making it. But it's a, which, which is a possibility. I might not end up making it. But then that's the that's the that's the risk of, the risk of exploration that you might not make. It. My rear view mirror is working well, so uh, that's great. now but they weren't working properly so I, I took them off and now I put them back on again and they're working well. I only need, I only need the left one so I didn't put the right one on I just have the left one and it's ain't properly it's working properly so for that I have, I, I, it's, not, it's, not, it's not as if I don't have success it's and sometimes we're dealing with a lot of different things a degree of pessimism comes in. A degree of neg uh, negativity comes in. That 
you didn't realize it was there. And that, the tipper comes in when you're on vacation and when you're taking, sort of taking time off. And for me, that's an indication the vacation's over. <laughs> And that's what I say. I, I, you know, summer was going to be a little bit of a slowdown, but the research continues regardless because I, I'm a person I can't stay away from it. As a, like like, like a, any nerd, this is my gaming, this is my reality, and I like and I actually enjoy studying. So it's not necessarily a chore for me to do the studying and research. expected to go. It's around 10, 30, 11. And I'm tired. And I'm not feeling so good, so great. So there may be a lot of silence in this spot. The interesting thing is you can never get away from your work once it's at a certain point it becomes an obsession and that obsession is something that sort of well it is omnipresent you go to bed with it you wake up with it you watch TV with it, every show you see has it in it. Oh. And it says that, 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 in this sense, what you're aware of, some people become aware of what you're doing or understand to a certain degree, but not entirely. And so it becomes isolated. And of course, there are certain characters that play it up, like this old TV show called Monk that we were watching. But the issues sort of play themselves out. You know, a lot of the issues that we think are current today were current uh, uh, decades ago. I mean, Lila LeBron likes to think of himself as this wonderful intellectual, riding through this particular period of, you know, uncertainty but to classify Lionel LeBron as an assessment as an analysis one need only go back to uh, history to see the intellectual sense of demagoguery 
And this is actually what Marx was. Marx was an intellectual demagogue. A person who thought of himself to such a degree that his he considered his intellect above anything else and expected others to pay homage or homage to honor his work whether it was warranted or not. It was just his own sense of preservation. So someone thought, oh, they're not really Marxist. They're not really left. I'm going to tell you this. And what are you going to tell me? Yeah. Yeah, that way to the left. Just follow me. Every driver asking for directions. Is that right? As a, a demagogue, particularly an intellectual demagogue, and there's really no other type, <laughs> um, prides himself on his intellect. His intellect is everything. Is what defines him. And so he will spend time telling you how you're wrong about the very simple minutia. Oh. And that his understanding is the only correct understanding. That's the nature of a demagogue. His understanding is the only understanding. And he's going to correct you as to why there is no left. But oh, what, just because you're saying, because we're all children. And he puts it. He's dealing with children. That, therefore, he will use the generalized term as left. Without going into a specific meaning. But you can go all the way back into the history of papers and these uh, what we call peer-reviewed publishers, uh, 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 peer-reviewed uh, uh, journals, and even non-peer-reviewed journals like Maclean's Magazine. Go into the history of Maclean's Magazine or Time Magazine or anything that has a good history, and you will find the attitude of the intellectuals there beyond and beyond and outside the scope of what's now called social media. And he's saying, well, today's problem is social media. Well, not really. Because if you look, look, go look back into the history of, of, of writing, of authorship, you'll find the exact same thing. It's intellectuals posting themselves into a position of authority based on their own intellect and how they understand this and that. And they're going to tell you what to do and what to believe and what to think and how to think. Uh, that's not done here. We're ex I'm going to explore. I, pay, I take no position of authority. There's a car beside me so playing music. What I do is I provide observation. I'm an observer. That's the nature of a scientist. Whether it's physics, astronomy, atmospheric physics, or whatever, ha whatever or even, let's say, metaphysics, right? Psychology. Psychology is part of metaphysics it's because it's part of the metaphysical world. Psychology literally means study of the soul. I can observe a soul. I can observe human beings. I can observe behavior just in the same manner I observe stars or whatever within physics. So there's no restriction as to what I can observe as an observer. So the, uh, the, the universe is open for me to explore. Where for a person who is an intellect, that's not the case. The case for the intellect, the entire world, the entire world of the intellect, of the intellectual, is simply within their own mind. And that's it. Anything outside their own mind, their own existence, is non-reality.
And it, you see that this is a struggle for someone like Lionel LeBron. How does the how does a conspiracy analyst feel about when he is analyzed as he analyzes others? How does the analyst feel about being analyzed? <laughs> how does the observer feel about being observed? And really, one of the reasons why I point out Lionel LeBron is that there's enough history out there in the public eye that Lionel LeBron can be can be studied in, in, in quite significant detail. And I think that's kind of problematic. He's back again. But he's telling, he's, this time he's found a direction, sort of. We'll see how long it lasts. Because he really he doesn't last long in any one particular direction. He'll go down a road for a particular bit, and he'll change and go off in someplace else. Again, just as confident as he was uh, when he went down his first path. Yeah, I'm going the right direction now. This is it. Follow me, everybody. And everyone has to follow him. He's a defender of the Constitution, so he did like Alex Jones did, and uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Glenn Beck of the Blaze did. And what did they do? They moved all their stuff behind a copyrighted firewall that, that you now have to subscribe to. Get the truth from Glenn Beck for a nice fee of blah, 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 blah. Well, Guess who did the same thing? That's right, Lionel LeBron, LionelMedia.com is now behind the firewall. He's got the, the teasers up front for free, but uh, he, you want to get the meat of the guy, you're going to have to pay for it. Well, for the average person. And if you're a researcher or an analyst like myself, there are ways to find the information. The information doesn't stay locked up for long. And because he's not necessarily privileged to information, that others aren't. So as long as there are people willing to talk out there, there's ways, if you're willing to sit down and do the research, that you can actually sit down and do the research and find the information this guy has found. And how do you know some of the information is right? Well, he becomes then the third source. He becomes an independent source. Because he's got a lot of well-placed friends. And by, by looking at what his well-placed friends are saying, you can sort of get a and with the information that you have found from other sources, well, now you have independent confirmation of where things are and where things stand. I'm using my mirror to see who's coming up behind me. <laughs> now I'm stopped at a stoplight. Ah. We're just at the 11 minute mark. Of course, we had to wait at Victoria Park for a bit. So it's understandable. But then again, we would have had to wait at the uh, light at uh, Van Horn, which almost never changes unless somebody comes by in the other direction. So the difference is, is in many ways negligible. Make sure the police. That's the nature of things, is that these things have been going on for a long time, uh, and it's just a matter of time to sort of go from one thing to the other. And my light hasn't kicked.
kicked in yet. The headlamp. Now why that is, I don't know. It's sure. I think I might have to replace the headlamp. So that's going to have to go on order. goes on. This is temporarily. There are people dancing to that tonight.